All right, getting started back on assembly. And um, first up, I was cleaning the head surfaces um, before I uh, get things together to put it back in. A little brake cleaner, scrubbing, just trying to make sure everything's clean. This morning, got everything all cleaned up. All the poles blown out with the compressor, cleaning up the threads. We're going to engine hoist the head into the car. Okay, got the head in place and we're running in the bolts. I'm going to run those down. Okay, we're going to torque down some bolts. First pass, uh, 22 pounds, foot pounds. Alright, that's 22. One, two straight across. We're going to go down and do all of them that up. like that. Hey, we are. Alright, this is our setup for checking the, uh, the rotational torque for, we're going to go to 155, but I'm actually going to go to 150. 60 because of all that linkage we're going to do each one and do it in a smooth stroke to get it all the way down Okay, um, after a long day yesterday, we have got the head in place, and it was, was not actually doing this twice in two broken head bolts. Um, we tried to uh, use the specifications in the manual, use the proper bolt pattern, but the, the instructions I have state uh, from all data DIY to torque the bolts to 22 foot pounds, then torque them again 155 degrees. Well, first time we got 11 of the bolts in and broke a bolt on 100, it was almost 150, I mean 155 degrees, snapped it off in this position. So we took everything back off, cleaned it up, got another set of bolts, and broke this one here off at about 140 degrees during the second set of torquing. So we regrouped and got uh, bolts that had not been torqued at all. We used those. Um, we all are or, or the ones that were torqued to 22 foot pounds but not stretched. We also had to use two of the bolts that were already torqued to the 155. So we got our set of bolts to use and we went and decided to follow the bolt manufacturer instructions and we torqued them to 22 foot pounds. Then we torqued them to um, 90 degrees, the second set, set. Then we torqued them to, we went up to uh, another uh, 30 degrees only. Um, for some reason, we felt like that the bolts were chattering when we were turning them. They were popping and creaking, and we thought that it was best to stop at 130. 
Um, and this could have been because of the machining of the head. Maybe the threads went in further, uh, or more threads actually engaged the block, causing more of the surface area and higher torque. Not sure, but we were really worried about breaking another bolt, so we only went to 130, uh, let's see, 90, 120 something degrees. So now um, we've already put in the uh, screws that hold the chain guides, or the bolts that hold the chain guides, and put the the covers on that and now we're going to go forward to the uh, sprockets again this is the broken bolt um, and you can see where it broke right here they seem to break right there the thread but <clears throat> um, you can see this is what they call the old style bolt with the washer separated Advanced Auto had both types and the new bolt, new style, or new design has the washer attached to the head of the bolt. Now I would recommend trying the new style if you could get a hold to them because it just seems like that uh, by that being separate it might be more creaking involved or more uh, friction issues involved causing the bolt to snap going back in, not sure. but. But that's my recommendation is to try to find the bolts where the, the washer and the, the bolt head are made the same way. Okay, um, although I've tried the tool to keep the tensioner in place, um, I can't get the, the sprocket on. Uh, there's not enough room, barely not even a millimeter. Uh, to get the exhaust cam sprocket back on. So I'm going to have to relieve the pressure on the, the uh, tensioner. There's a lever appears to be on the side is, with a little loop in it. And if you go online and see, there's a little loop and you pull up on that. But we'll have to relieve the pressure off the chain. Can't have any pressure on it to get the lever to actually to release uh, the tensioner and push it back. Um, but once it's back, we got to put the tool in place. But the tool didn't stay. Something changed. Something moved at some point. But we're going to see what happens. Okay, so this is what I had to do. Um, I was able to get the sprocket back on. And what I did was, and this is a diagram that I made. Um, there she goes. There's a lever on the side of the tensioner here. Um, what I had to do was take the um, a, a close hanger and make a sharp, like a right angle bend and hook that on the side. And you could see it with a flashlight right down. It's on the front side of the vehicle. Um, you could see that lever on the side. You could go on eBay or YouTube or... Uh, Google to see this lever but you have to pull up on the lever to release it and when you do that what I did was pull tight on the chain that pulled the plunger back and then I was able to put the sprocket on and it should engage when you release the clothes hanger but after you release it pulling it up pull tight on the chain that pulls the plunger back and then you could let go of the clothes hanger and put your sprocket on and this is what um, it looked, the clothes hanger looked like here just a little very small uh, hook goes right down in the side toward in, inside of there toward the plunger right about at this position here right over the, where the sprocket would be and then like I said pull up on it that releases the uh, plunger and you can hear it release and, and you don't want to have any tension on the plunger when it releases then you can pull tight on the chain up and put the sprocket in place um, you can see my markings here everything seems to be 
back in the exact same position from when I started. Um, timing marks, yeah, are on the sprockets. Everything's lining back up to where I had it on the chain, on the sprockets, so making more progress. Okay, I've got both of my uh, my sprockets on and hand tight bolts. I've already done the uh, torque on the intake sprocket to. 180 inch pounds. Um, it calls for 15 foot pounds, but I had my inch tool. And then I just turned it 100 degrees. This was went much smoother than the head bolts torquing, so I was very pleased with that. Now I've got to move over to do the, the uh, exhaust uh, sprocket, and I think I'm gonna have to loosen this shroud, get it out of the way. I may even have to take the fan blade off to get enough room in here for the gauge and my socket uh, to torque yet so I, I don't really have enough room the way it is so we'll work around that okay we've got the uh, engine turned to revolutions um, it's back into time and we're just making sure it's right back in the time where it should be I'm gonna check the flats on the back of the camshaft in the back of the engine back there right back there make sure everything's flat but um i think we should be in good shape okay have the uh inlet hose uh, mount to the engine and i didn't have to uh take the steer power steering off i was able to take this 10 millimeter uh, wrench from the back side and tighten that bottom bolt after I finger tightened it from both sides like that of course that one's tight as well okay um, ready to install the uh, camshaft cover okay we have got uh, valve cover back on new gaskets we've also installed this all the spark plugs in place and now we're going to put on the um, ignition Got the uh, all the coil packs on. Now we're going to install the uh, exhaust manifold. Shouldn't take too terribly long. And we're going to exhaust manifold tighten to uh, 10 newton meters. No, excuse me. All right, I'm going to correct myself. Um, there's the exhaust manifold pattern. Um, we're going to put in a new gasket, tighten it according to that pattern, and it says to do three passes up to 20 newton meters or 15 foot pounds. So looks like we'll be doing three passes on. On the bolt pattern and there's the pattern again also um, I got this anti-seize to put on there it calls for anti-seize so um, I needed some anyway and I decided to use the recommended anti-seize on the bolts the uh, exhaust manifold in um, it calls to put 
the shield on first. But I think I'm going to put the tailpipe connection back first. And then I'll do the shield. Um, just because it's easier to see the gasket. So um, anyway, that's the order I'm Okay, we've got the exhaust pipe back on. And now we're going to install this heat shield. It's a little dark out, but... Um, just thought I would show you I've installed this right here which is some sort of uh, air intake valve put that back on put on the uh, back here a little red handled uh, transmission bracket I've also bolted on the um, see if you could see better the shield in there all shield so making progress and I will bolt up the uh, oil uh, stick next yellow handle right there okay we have uh, got the intake manifold assembled and all the uh, uh, coils assembled and um, going to the next step. Okay, so I've started hooking things back up some more. I've got the alternator I've started there. Um, there's a bracket down here that I had to uh, bolt back up first. Bolted all that up first. Um, and then I put in uh, the computer PCM module. Um, a lot of these harness wires uh, had to be reconnected in here. I mean, in, into the brackets. So, um, again, alternators. I started putting it back in, but I held off so I could screw this bracket, this metal bracket, under the computer module. Or I put it in first, and then now I'm working on wiring the computer module back up. I'm gonna put these on. I put this hose on and also the hose down here. I put that back on. Um, got a lot more wiring up to do, but I thought I'd just at least go that far with it.